Hello. This video will give you a brief introduction into the MATLAB interface, some of the common syntax that you will encounter in this course, as well as some of the functions that you can use to simulate control systems, and we'll then conclude with a method of how you can export your results. We begin today with the MATLAB interface. When you start up MATLAB, you will see various different windows, and I will now explain to you what they all mean. Over here, you have your current working directory, and in the current folder tab, you see all of the files that are contained in it, as well as their file extensions. Over here, you have the command window. The command window allows you to quickly type in any, um, any commands, and define any variables that you want. This allows you to test your script files as you go on. For example, you could define a variable a, which is equal to 90, or you could calculate the square root of 8400, and it will give you also the answer right here. Uh, if you have any sort of um, output in your script files, it will also be given into the command window. <laughs> Over here you have the command history. The command history shows you all of the commands that you have previously run. This allows you to quickly uh, rerun any sort of previous command, for example, by double-clicking it. Over here, you have the workspace. The workspace shows you all of your currently defined variables that you have. You have something called the answer variable, which gives you the previous answer of whatever command you have executed. Um, one of the good things about the workspace is if you have defined a matrix, let me quickly define a matrix, you can double click it and it will bring it up in this Excel window, which allows you to either easily export it or to see all of the entries at each row and each column. So let's begin by uh, talking about some of the common syntax that you will encounter in this course. MATLAB allows for very easy definition of variables without defining their type. For example, you could say a is equal to 5 and b is equal to 9.8 and you can easily add them unlike in some other uh, programming languages. One of the things that you will commonly encounter, especially in this course with uh, state space formulations, is the definition of a matrix. A matrix, uh, I'll call it capital A, is defined uh, row by row, and each element in the row is uh, separated by commas. So for example, for comma 5, comma 3, comma 3, and then if you want to start typing on the second um, on the second row, you have to uh, use the semicolon to jump to the second row or to the next row. So essentially, you have comma separated lists that define each entry in a row, and if you want to go to the next row, you use a semicolon. So now it's uh, A is a 2 by 4 matrix. If you ever want to find out um, the size of a matrix, you type use the size command, which tells you that you have here two rows and four columns. This is a command that's very important for things like matrix multiplication. Another thing or another command that you will commonly encounter um, is uh, the well the ac ac accessing individual components within a matrix. Okay, so given that A is uh, the following matrix, if we want to know what the first 
what the entry is at the first row and the first column, we uh, type in A bracket 1 comma 1. Let me just make this bigger. So we can also access multiple um, multiple entries from that column. Okay. So when you're trying to access entries within the matrix, the first uh, entry here in this bracket is the denotes the rows, and the second the columns. So if we wanted the first row and we wanted the second and the fourth in, um, column, we can give it like so. And it will return to you uh, the 5 and the 3. The other thing that's very important is the colon operator. So what you can say is you can say uh, I want to get all rows and I would like to get these second column and then it'll return to you five and six uh, another thing that you can do here is you can say a add let's say the first row and let's say you don't know how many entries uh, how many columns the matrix has then you can say two comma uh, two and then to the end so this should return to you the first row of your matrix, which is here, except the columns, it will want to use the second, third, and fourth, and then all the way up to the end. And then it returns to you 5, 3, 3. Okay. Another thing that you might want to do is uh, you might want to populate a vector. So one thing that you will commonly encounter, especially with simulation, is how to define a time vector. Okay. So MATLAB, MATLAB allows it uh, very easily by using the following command. So let's say you want to start at 0, and you want to increment the time vector by 0 0.1 seconds. And you want to go ahead and do this until t is equal to 10 seconds. Okay. So when you run this command, it will populate a vector for you, which starts at 0 and increments by 0 0.1 seconds all the way until 10. Okay. And if you do the size of time, it will tell you that this is a vector which has one row and 101 columns. If you want to do the transpose of a matrix, you go A and then apostrophe, and then it will return to you just a simple transpose. Now you will find that, for example, when I define the time vector, it uh, gives you all of the input into your command window which can get really cluttered especially once you get into things like images where you have 640 by 480 by 3 entries so you can actually suppress command window output if you put the semicolon at the end of the command so then when you run this it does not uh, it still executes the command but it does not give you the output where it shows you uh, element by element what the time vector is. Okay, let's talk a little bit about how to plot using MATLAB. So we have now a time vector. So now let's uh, say y is equal to time. Okay, and so let's plot t comma y. Oh, sorry, time. And then it'll uh, bring it to you up in the figure. And since it's um, y is equal to x, it's uh, just a simple straight line. So now we want to talk. Um, what if we wanted to say um, t x is equal to y squared? 
Well, we can't just simply go y is equal to the time to the power of 2 because MATLAB will default to matrix multiplication. Okay, So if you find out the size of time, MATLAB will try to multiply a 1 by 101 uh, vector by another 1 by 101 vector and it'll give you an error. Uh, to, re to remedy that, we have to use something that's called element-wise multiplication, where you put a dot in front of the to the power of two, and then it'll multiply each entry of the time vector with each uh, entry of the time vector. Okay. So then, when you plot t uh, time and y, you'll get this. Um, squared function. Now one thing that uh, whenever you do a graph you don't want to just leave it as uh, uh, empty x and y labels because this tends to cause a lot of confusion. So then we can use the x label command and then we can give it any sort of uh, any sort of label that we want. So our x label is time and don't forget the units. Now when you run this command you'll find that uh, x label has been added to the graph. Usually I find that whenever I uh, copy and paste that figure into something like Word that the default font size is pretty small. So I always use the font size uh, command afterwards and then let's give it a nice and big font 14 because that scales nicely so now you have something big so even if you resize it it will still be nice and big and we can do the same thing with the Y label and then uh, whatever we call it just input and why not call it Newton's always uh, put the units on your axes and then again we will use the font size and you have to remember to uh, use these apostrophes around uh, the font size uh, string. Now we can also do the same thing with title and then force input as a mm -hmm. why don't I call it f of t and font size also works here as well okay so now you've seen how to plot your results and then you can also um, do something a lot more fancy like uh, plotting multiple entries uh, if you want to do that why don't we go plot time and then this should work y dot to the power of 2 oh. so Okay, so what I've done here, I've plotted time and then I've, uh, since I wanted uh, to use time for the x vector, what I've done here, I've created a 2 by 101 vector. So what uh, MATLAB will do, it will plot the first row versus time and then it will plot the second row versus time. And you will see that it assigns every different um, every different plot uh, a separate color, which is good for uh, if you want to keep track of your uh, of your plots. You can also use the legend command. 
So the legend will allow you to define every plot for what it is. So first entry and then second entry. Oh, oh I see. Let me replot it again because I've closed the window. It just um, said it was an empty plot. So if you use the up arrow, you can actually cycle through your command history to find the previously entered uh, commands. And then you get your uh, legend right here. Now let's say uh, you start typing, so if I say A, and then you go up, and it'll show you the last previous command that had A at the beginning. Okay. We'll now move on to the symbolic toolbox and how to use the symbolic toolbox to solve inverse Laplace. Um, let me clear all the entries. When you use clear all, you clear all of your variables in your workspace. And if you use close all, it closes all of the currently open plotting windows. So to use MATLAB uh, to solve inverse Laplace, we first define something called a symbolic uh, variable. So we'll type S is equal to a sim S. So this defines a symbolic object, uh, which is S, and rather than evaluate it, for example, like A is equal to 5, and then if you say 2 times A, it will evaluate the numerical value of it and gives you 10. Now, if you go 2 times S, it will just return to you 2 times S, or 2 times S to the power of 2. So now that we have our symbolic uh, variable, we can um, use that to find the inverse Laplace. First, we define our uh, transfer function, which is s plus 1 divided by s squared plus 6s plus 9. Oh, uh, you have to remember to multiply 6 times s plus 9. Then you use the i Laplace find f. Okay, so one thing uh, that you can do, you can use the command pretty, which shows it to you in a uh, in a way that is more human friendly than showing it like in a line like this. And sometimes when you do when you run some very complicated commands, let me try doing something like this. Oh, yeah, you will get something that uh, looks kind of very complicated. And in some cases, you can use the command simplify. Simplify answer. And sometimes it works to, uh, to simplify it slightly and you can see that this one is a bit shorter and let's try using pretty on this one and I'll show you that it's um, in, a, yeah, in a much more friendly uh, view. This one is a very complicated uh, Laplace, inverse Laplace so that's why it might not, um, that's why it looks the way it does. So aside from using the symbolic variables to solve inverse Laplace, we can also use them to uh, solve Kramer's rule. In this course, whenever we're talking about multiple degree of freedom systems, we encounter the Kramer's rule to solve for one of the unknowns within uh, multiple equations and multiple unknowns. Okay. So the way we do that 
let me define a uh, two by two matrix right here. The following matrix is um, a two degree of freedom system that has uh, two spring masses, that has two masses that are separated by a spring and a dampener. And we want to solve for the second, for the displacement of X2, which is the second column. So we define, uh, let's define our force, which is uh, F as, the, as a symbolic object. So F. Okay. So Kramer's rule is the determinant of AI divided by the determinant of A. So if we want to define AI, let's make let's put a copy of A into AI. And then let's change the second column to the solution vector, which is 0 and F. Oh, sorry, which would be F and 0. So what we want to say is A, we want to select the second column. So we say all rows, comma, second column is equal to. And then now we have to give it something that is the same size as the second column and we'll say F and 0. And then it shows us what we have for AI. So then if we want to find um, X2, we can even call it X2, is equal to determinant of AI divided by the determinant of A. And you'll find the following which is F plus F times S divided by S to the power of 4 plus 2S cubed plus 2S squared. And you'll find that because this F right here is multiplied into every element in the numerator, you can actually uh, factor it out and divide, it, divide X2 by F to get the transfer function, which will be 1 plus S over S to the power of 4 plus 2S cubed plus 2S squared. And that will give you the displacement x2 as a function of uh, the force f applied on the first mass. Okay, we'll now talk about how to use transfer functions uh, within MATLAB to evaluate things like the step response or the impulse response. We begin with the tf command. So sys, uh, we'll call our system sys, uh, which is abbreviation, tf. Now the tf takes in two vectors, which I will just leave blank for now, because I need to say a few things about those vectors. Um, well, it takes it as a numerator and then as a denominator. The numerator uh, is the coefficients of s. And the way MATLAB handles these is it begins um, with, your with your last entry, which is the coefficient of s to the power of 0, which is just constants, then s to the power of 1, then s to the power of 2, and so on. So let's say we wanted to define uh, the numerator as s plus, s plus 4. So we would give it 1 times s to the power of 1, and then 4 times s to the power of 0. And that works the same in the denominator. So let's give it s squared plus 6s plus 9. So then it's 1 times s to the power of 2, and then 6s to the power of 1, and then 9. So then you get the following. So now you have this object, which is a transfer function. This transfer function um, can be used in MATLAB to find things like the step response.
and then you'll find the following or the impulse response using the impulse command and you can see that this is an overdamped response So, since we're talking about control systems, uh, we, uh, we can also use MATLAB to define some uh, state space formulations. So, let me define a matrix as 0, 1 and 4, 5, and then B matrix as um, 0, 1, and then C matrix as 0, 1 and d equal to zero so then we can give it the system two using the ss command and a b c d to find uh, to define a state space model and the state space model also works with the step command and you'll find that the way the system was defined, um, it actually goes to infinity, so it's an unstable system, or an impulse command. And again, the way the system is defined is um, um, unstable because it goes uh, given a bounded input, it actually uh, the output is not bounded. Okay, so maybe let me redefine A to try and get a more stable response. Well, it's okay, it's, uh, it's not really important right now. The one thing that I wanted to show you is just how to define the state space models and how to define the transfer functions. Now the other thing that you can do, you can actually convert state space models into uh, transfer functions. And you can do that using the command ss2tf. Okay. Whenever you're curious about what the command does, you type in help and then the command name and then MATLAB will actually return to you a whole list of uh, what the command does and what sort of um, what sort of inputs it takes okay so the ss2tf command returns two entries which is the numerator and the denominator and it takes in the a b c and d matrices so let's do that. Let's define numerator, comma denominator. Here I define the variables that will be used to store the coefficients in. And uh, a, b, c, d. So now you have the numerators and the denominators. And now you can actually define system 3 is equal to transfer function of numerator and denominator and then you get the following transfer function and if you go step of system 2 and system 3 um, actually what I will do I will give us a new figure MATLAB always plots in the figure that's currently active. So if I go step and then system three, it will plot it in figure two. And then let me select figure one, step system two. And you will find that those two are equal, which uh, they should be. So, and over here MATLAB also tells you which equation it uses to calculate the numerator and the denominator 
And that's the equation that you have seen in class already. So, other than SS2TF, you can also have TF2SS. And let's find out what uh, TF2SS does. So, it uh, takes in the numerator and the denominator. So, let's find the previous numerator and denominator. So, let's say numerator is equal to 1, 4. So, let's say denominator is equal to 1, 6, 9. Then, using the tf2ss command, uh, is equal to, sorry, uh, numerator and then denominator. Now, since I only, since I didn't give it any variables here that I want the output to be stored in, It uh, only gave me the A matrix, so to properly define it, you have to say A, B, C, and D is equal to TF2SS numerator denominator. And now it gives you all of these. Uh, 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 it returns you all of these. So now you can define system 4 as equal to SS A, B, C, D. And then again, you can go step system four. And then you get the same response as previously. Another thing that you can do with state space that you cannot do with transfer functions is you give it some initial conditions on the states. So using the initial command, you can simulate system four with uh, zero, uh, using just initial conditions with zero input. So you can say, well, let's put the states at two and three. And then it simulates how the system behaves given uh, those initial conditions. And you'll see that there is an exponential decay. Now, right now, our output y it's just a uh, one by one um, matrix. Now let's redefine Y to be two by two. So where we have C, let's make it um, a two by two matrix. Zero, one. So now, when we give it an initial command, because we have now two outputs, it actually gives us the output of, uh, it gives us the time response of both outputs. Uh, the first output is a linear combination of the state x1 and x2, and the second output is just uh, the second state, as uh, shown by the C matrix. Another very important command is the LSIM command. And the LSIM command allows you to simulate the system to any custom output that you might have. Uh, sorry, custom input. So the LSIM command takes in three inputs. The system, the U vector, which is an input vector, and the corresponding time vector. So essentially what it is, U and T have to be equal, and it shows you the input at time t. So let's simulate a system given a ramp response. So we have our time vector already, not yet, because we at some point must have set clear all. So let's define time is equal to zero, and we'll go in 0 0.1 second steps all the way until t is equal to 10 seconds. And we'll say u is equal to 
2 times t time. Okay. So now we can use LSIM and we'll use our uh, transfer function system 4. Uh, sorry, our state space system, system 4. And then u and then time. So this here shows the output and you can see that the gray line is the input that you're sending it and the blue line is the response of the first output uh, and the second li blue line is the response of the second output. Now you can um, do a lot of different things with it. For example, you can define u as a sinusoid, 2 times the sine of time, or just the sine of time. And then when you simulate a system, you'll get something like this, which is the um, frequency response of the system, given a certain sinusoidal input. And again, you have in gray here, y is equal to sine uh, of t. And then again in blue, with a slight lag and with a amplitude error, you have your uh, response. So the next thing that we're going to look into is how to actually publish your results. Whenever you're working on, on your assignments, I would recommend that you work rather than in the command window, you work in these uh, scripts. When you close MATLAB and restart, all of your workspace variables are gone because they're sto stored in your RAM. Um, you will have your command history, but all of your results will be pretty much gone. So I recommend that you work here. So if you use a double command, you can actually uh, separate different sections by uh, this line. So you can, and I'll show you why this is important. So let's uh, create two different sections in the script. The first one will be define variables. And the second one will be plot outputs. So in the first one, let's uh, define a time vector that starts at 0, 0, point, um, 0 0.01, and then to 1 second. We'll give it uh, some sort of a input u, which will be, and I will suppress the output with a semicolon. And then u is equal to sine of t. And again, I will suppress the output with a semicolon. So let's give system 1 is equal to transfer function. And then uh, s plus 4. And then here, I'll make s squared plus 6s plus 9. So here... Um, I won't suppress the output. Let's uh, save this file as um, example transfer function. Now be careful when naming your uh, files. Whenever you run the script, MATLAB essentially types in example tf for you. If this for some reason should conflict, if you call it for example the sign or the tf command, you will find that you will have a lot of weird behavior where rather than wanting to execute the command tf, it will try to run your script which you might have named tf. Also, MATLAB does not allow you to start the name of your script with a number. Uh, it has to start with a, um, uh, with a letter. You will also run into trouble if you have spaces within your name because it will then assume something like example tf. 
see um, MATLAB here tries to run it as a separate com as a strange command so try not to use any spaces if you must use underscores so now if you are in a particular section you can use control enter to just execute those uh, the commands that are within this section if you ever want to re remove all of the uh, output from the command window you type in CLC and then it cleans it up it cleans it up for you so then when you press control enter on this section it will just run this uh, section just the code in this section so let's say for a second that the assignment is that you want to find the step response of that system as well as uh, the LSIM output for u is equal to sine t. So let's say figure one will create a, a figure and we'll uh, assign it to number one and then we'll say step sys one which will give us essentially our step input and now in figure two we want the LSIM command of the system one and u comma t and if you press control enter it will just execute this particular one now if you look at the step response you will find that it goes from 0 to 3 if you uh, look at the help file for the step response it also gives you another um, an option where you can say t final so let's say i only want the step to be from 0 to um, to go until t is equal to 5 seconds and now you'll find that you simulated from 0 to 5 seconds and your LSIM only goes as far as your time vector which we said should go from um, 0 to 1 let's make it also go to 5 seconds okay so now that we have our response uh, our solution usually the common uh, thing that the students do is they copy and paste every single one of these individually into a word file but the truth is matlab has it all pre pre done for you uh, and that you can do using the publish command when you click the publish command just on this um, if you just click on it it will run the default settings and it will actually return it to you in an HTML file which is not very useful for most of us and you can see uh, these um, the double percent signs then become section headings you also see all of the command uh, window output and it also copy and pastes all of the um, figures into it so let's look at, this, um, at the parameters for it and if you look, click on this arrow right next to it you can edit publish configuration for example tf.m and here under output file format it says HTML so here that you can actually export it into a word file where you can continue to edit it but I think that everything is good so I'll just um, export it as PDF and then I click on publish And then after a little bit of a time delay it actually publishes it for me as a um, PDF file with the headings the code in it as well as all of the output that will be run given the code okay one thing that you should be careful of um, maybe add a little bit extra uh, documentation in here this section defines the variables so there's a difference if you use double percent signs whether you put a space after it or not if you put a space after it it becomes a section heading if you don't it becomes text so then this 
code plots the output. The one thing that you have to be really careful of is you have to make sure that your figures don't overwrite themselves. If you leave out this command where you create a new figure, you will run into trouble. Let me close all the windows. And when I run this now, it um, actually overwrites the step response. So if I was to try and publish this now, it would only give you the one figure rather than the step response as well as the uh, sinusoidal response. So that's why before, every time before you plot something, make sure that you assign it a proper figure. Okay. So now, if you publish it with all the figures properly defined, uh, MATLAB will then create all of your output as is necessary. And it also gives you, yeah. All right, I hope this was very informative. And if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Thank you.